I'm a big fan. I used to listen to your radio shows uh, uh, when they used to broadcast the Park High School basketball games. And I, you know, yeah, that's a long. That's going way back. You betcha. And it's a case too where I have a feeling we might have done a St. Catharines basketball game or two along the way as well. So <laughs> they heard all about your exploits. That's for certain. So, well, tell you what, because I I take it this is not the first time you've gone into a Hall of Fame because I'm sure that you're probably in the St. Cats Hall of Fame. Are you enshrined in a Marquette kind of Hall of Fame as well? Yes, I'm in Marquette. Uh, I'm in. Uh, uh, the Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio has two Hall of Fame. Oh, really, both of those two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you've got the honor coming up. But let's look at let's look back at your career in basketball, starting out with St. Catharines High School, the time that you played there. And a lot of people consider you one of the great, if not one of the greatest players, to come out of Racine ever. Tell us a little bit about your experience when you were playing for St. Cats. Well, it started before St. Cats. I played a uh, junior high. I played at Franklin. Okay. And uh, that's where I really started to enjoy the game. When I went to high school, uh, uh, the tallest guys uh, on the team, the tallest guys in the school was myself and a guy named Gary Manchester, mm-hmm. uh, who was who was six six, and I was six six, and we were just uh, tenth graders. So uh, that was a good start. Gary was a was an exceptional basketball player, and uh, our, our year that we played together. Uh, he was uh, probably our best our best player, mm-hmm. and then uh, then I had a chance to leave Park and and go to St. Catharines, and uh, so I left. When, when did when did you start understanding that you had a special talent when it came to playing basketball, one that would carry you into the pros? Was there a certain point? Was it in junior high? Was it in high school? Well, I think it was. Uh, uh, it probably was junior high. I just loved to play. You know, I I just loved to play. It was to me. It wasn't even about winning yet. Yeah, I just liked to play. You know, I just there was something about the competition, uh, the anticipation, uh, the conditioning that it took, and the running and the jumping. And when everything's going well, you can feel it. Like there's a certain rhythm that a, a basketball has, and and that each player has based upon his own uh, abilities and and. and there was something about the game I enjoyed. And then I used to watch it on black and white. On, uh, I used to watch the Celtics. They were the only team they had on every Sunday. Right. And uh, I was sitting there watching it with my father, and he was and I was sitting between his legs looking at television, and, he, and he, we were on the couch, and all of a sudden he said, Jim, you can do that. And I said, no. And before I could finish, no, my, my dad had slapped me. He <laughs> said, no, you're a chones. You can do anything. He said, you can do that, Jim. And I never forgot that. Yeah. And uh, that was a motivator for me at 11 and 12 and 13. And then we started playing on the playgrounds and the rec centers up at Franklin and the rec center over at Racine Street. And I got better. And uh, uh, someone told me about this great high school coach uh, at St. Catharines named John McGuire, who was once at Park and who was the JV coach. And how everybody said, this guy really can teach you how to play the right way. And, so I went over there one day uh, during the school year and uh, met him and told him I was thinking about leaving school and coming over there to St. Catharines. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, "He, Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, like he didn't even want me. And uh, I, he said, you sure you want to do this? At the time, I was 6'9". And uh, he said, are you sure you want to do this? I said, yeah, because I want to go to college. And so far, nobody's talking about college for me. You know, and uh, and I really want to go to college, so uh, I made the move. Uh, March twenty fifth, March twenty fifth, I left. I walked out of Park High School with my transcripts and walked over to St. Catharines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful, and it, it it changed your life in a lot of different ways. That uh, transfer, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It, 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 it did because it was a different. Uh, it was a different uh, culture there. You know, the, with the. Everybody was involved with prayer in the morning and mm-hmm. prayer before the games, and and then I had a chance to talk to uh, Monsignor Wachowiak, who, other than my high school coach, probably had the biggest influence on me at St. Catharines. He was a guy that could speak thirteen different languages, wow. and he was he was just uh, he was a scholar. I was so scholarly, and I just I really admired him. He come to all our games, and then of course my great high school coach. Who, uh, who I believe was the best coach I ever had. Pros, anything, you know. He was, he was definitely my best coach. 
Well, moving on from the from the uh, high school ranks to college, you moved on to Marquette. Uh, what, what was your first encounter with Al McGuire like? Uh, I had met Al uh, earlier. Uh, they didn't recruit me until who man? It had to be uh, uh, till 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 almost till the summer. School was out. Mm-hmm. They finally tried to recruit me, and uh, they invited me up to their end of the season banquet. And at the banquet was uh, Bill Fitch, really, uh, who was who was the coach of Minnesota. He was the keynote speaker, mm-hmm. and he had been recruiting me for two months. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, after dinner, he said, "Listen," and he said this right at the podium. He said, "Listen, if you don't go to to Minnesota, you got to go to Marquette." Now, Bill Fitch became my first NBA coach. That's that's correct. Because I ended up going to Cleveland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Isn't that something? So. Yeah, so it all worked out. Yeah, yeah. And Al McGuire, you know, of course, he's a character, and and uh, uh, I'm an impressionable young kid. And my dad, my dad, uh, he told my dad the first time they met. He Wait. said, "Listen, if he does what I tell him, he'll be a pro, Jay." <laughs> and uh, it was simple as that. And I always did what he told me, and everything worked out. Well, that's great. that's that's great. Because the thing is, you you were you were on the team that won the NIT in uh, 1970, correct? You were part of that no, team. No, no, you no, weren't a part no, of that no. team. I was a freshman then. Oh, were yeah. you? Okay, and, and, and freshmen we weren't kick eligible. Those guys' butts. We used to kick their butts because <laughs> we had we had four high school All Americans on our team. Myself, uh, Kurt Spicala, mm-hmm. uh, Ali McGuire. Yep. And uh, George Frazier, we were we were all high school all Americans, mm-hmm. That's and uh, everybody was getting them. Minnesota had a bunch of them, Michigan had a bunch of them, and so. Uh, uh, but uh, we were supposed to have the best freshman team in the country. Wow! And uh, and uh, we used to whip on those guys all the time. <laughs> you know, we used to beat up on Dean and Rick, and <laughs> right. We used to have some real battles, and so uh, Al couldn't wait. You know, he couldn't wait uh, for those guys to leave. And the one and the one thing about that time too, that was still around the time where there only was what what sixteen teams in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, there might have been sixty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the low sixties. Yeah. And uh, the you know the reason you know well you know the reason why they went to NIT. Yeah. Is because rather than playing their own region, they were going to send them down south. Oh yeah. Where they would have really taken them for a loop, you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> yeah. That's so uh, so Al said, "Well, we won't go." And somebody said, "What? You won't go to the NCAA?" No, we'll go to NIT, and he did. And Marquette won the NIT. They sold out every game at Madison Square Garden. Uh, they for for the two weeks that we were involved in NIT, uh, Marquette was getting more publicity than the whole NCAA tournament because of Al McGuire. They mm-hmm. just, and I think that's when everybody looked at Al and said, hey, this guy, you know, he transcends sports. You know, he's an entertainer, and he has something to say, and he's different. And I think that probably led him into his broadcasting more than anything. And, it, and now, it's a case where you've been doing broadcasting for years in Cleveland. Does his style more or less influence what you're doing on the air these days? Yeah, I try to tell the truth without without hurting people, you know. And I think Al was Al was a, was a really good at that. Uh, I've worked for ESPN off and on for twenty years, and uh, six out of the last seven years until I started doing radio with the Cavaliers mm-hmm. this year. Uh, I did ESPN. I, I did the Horizon League. I did more games in the Horizon League than anybody. The only the, the only game I couldn't get was the championship game. But uh, but I've worked for ESPN. They've been good to me. I've been working for them for over 15, 18 years now, off and on. And, yeah, uh, and doing doing mid-major stuff. I don't do the big games. I just do the mid-majors. Right. And then you moved on to the NBA, played for the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers as well as the Los Angeles Lakers, and you found a home in Cleveland now. And that's where you're at doing uh, doing pregame and postgame on the radio, correct? Yeah, and uh, now uh, last season, because the great Joe Tate, uh, who was the greatest living? Uh, who's, who was who the greatest living radio guy mm-hmm. uh, in, in, the, in the country? I don't know what they do in baseball, but in basketball, it's Joe Tate Easley. Oh yeah, uh, he he had heart trouble, so they needed someone to do the games. So they hired me last year. I did eighty-one games, uh, traveled with the team, stayed at those two expensive hotels where all I could afford was a salad. <laughs> uh, 
And so uh, I travel with them, and man, it's funny you should see that we should talk about that because tomorrow I go in, I sign my contract, they sign me, and they, they want me to do it again this year. Well, good for you. So, uh, so uh, radio's fun. I love I love radio, man, and, and it's not going anyplace. Trust me. And the one thing I do want to mention to folks around these parts, if they're looking to hear Jim's work, you can hear it. It's a fifty thousand watt clear channel station. You can hear in thirty eight oh, states. Oh, sure can. Half of Canada, <laughs> WTAM. So if you don't know it, you can hear Jim work on the radio right here at home, which is great.